Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm Rebel Venom Shorty, and today I'm going to carry on something I was doing last week, which is reviewing Marvel characters' solo stories with Black Panther. Um, it says Ewing on the top there. It's Eve Ewing, not Al Ewing. Um, and I usually review a lot of Al Ewing stuff. He's prolific at the moment. Um, this one, different writer entirely, different gender as far as I'm aware, um, but excellent. I am not going to bury the lead on this one whatsoever. This is a positive review from the get-go. There is, I think, like, maybe two minor little criticisms I've got, both of which involve art. Um, I'm sorry, one involving art, one involving a slight story thing. But other than that, I'm going to just tell you straight up, I love this comic book so much that even after having a conversation earlier on today with all of my regular customers about having to cut down my own personal pull list, because otherwise I'm taking a lot of my wage and put it right back into the company, uh, I'm going to start struggling. So I need, I need to buy less comic books. But this one is sorely tempting me. How does it do this, you ask? Well, first of all, it looks amazing. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to double-check the names of the creators if I can find them, because I am pretty bad at remembering this kind of thing, and I have this horrible feeling. Ah, here we go. Uh, Chris Allen on the artwork, who does a fantastic job. Um, and Jesus Abiratov. I'm not entirely sure if I'm pronouncing that even remotely correctly, uh, on the colours, and both of these are people absolutely worth talking about. For start, the colours are amazing. They are rich and deep and add to everything that happens in them. Artwork... Very early on, I realised there's something this artist was doing which was spectacular because it showed an absolute commitment to the form and an appreciation of it, which by making the cityscape and the negative spaces around the panels and things that happen in the panels part of the guttering. And honestly, that's just a sweet little thing to do. And at the moment you notice it, you can see it all the time and it's fantastic. Also, the cityscapes are beautiful. This is a Wakandan cityscape kind of stuff. Think with a very obvious cyberpunk vibe. It's really OTT industrialized kind of things, but still very, very pretty in its own way. And you can't do that without being immaculate in your art style when it comes to doing cities. Three-point perspective looks amazing. Depth and shading and coloring adds to everything. But we do get to with the one minor little criticism I've got. Look at the artwork. I was so taken in by the cityscapes and even some of the action sequences we see that when there were some talking head moments, the artwork didn't quite live up to some of the larger scope. Uh, on the close-up, it failed a little bit in tiny, small areas. The kind of criticism which probably should not stop anyone from enjoying a comic book. Certainly better than some of the artwork I've seen recently, by a massive degree. But it's worth pointing out that it is a small failing. Um, on to the story. This is the bit where it shines for me, though, because... It's a cyberpunk story, and cyberpunk is by its very nature this topic, but it's set in Wakanda, which is the wealthiest country on the planet, which had a monarchy, but has now gone to um, a democracy, and it basically has an awful lot to say about this transitional state, and how even when people should have access to everything, it doesn't mean they have access to enough, um, and where this can lead to in terms of corruption, both of high state kind of thing, and also low-level police enforcement. These are all kind of beats with regard to politics. I thoroughly enjoy enjoy reading about. I like the fact that we have an ex-monarch doing this story, because I think it's going to be pretty obvious where his intention is going to lay in terms of, but surely if I was still king everything would be okay. But within the first few pages we get a sense that he's realised that he's never quite known exactly what's been going on uh, at this level in his own country. He is an Avenger, still, um, and he goes off and does these huge end of the world kind of things. Um, and he has a little Batman Bruce Wayne kind of moment where he is this exceptionally wealthy person who's taken upon himself to make sure there is still law and order in his city, which is an odd thing because there's an awful lot of racial connotations to the phrase law and order. But it, again, it doesn't take him long to realise that that might not be what's going on here. Like, he talks about the fact that in Wakanda, it's a wealthy enough country that nobody is homeless, nobody... Uh, needs food. Nobody has to worry about healthcare. But there's a difference between having your basic necessities supplied and having an abundance of things. And they live in a post-scarcity environment, pretty much. So being in this situation does feel weird. And it shows that there is, even in utopic kind of areas, there's still room for dystopia. There's still people who can take advantage, who will see a chance to lift themselves up on the backs of other people. And with uh, T'Challa has been part of that system. He's now seeing it from a different viewpoint, and it's it's really nice. Um, in terms of the story, though, there's like the one beat where again it's um I think if you're coming in for an action kind of thing, um, and from that cover it does give a sense that he's going to be doing more like Batman esque kind of stuff. You get a lot less of that. There's much more in terms of conversational stuff, and if you're looking for an action combo, you might not get. So go and read the Avengers things at the moment. That's actually really cool action sequence kind of stuff. Jen McKay is doing a really good job with that. But if you want something a bit more heavy hitting, where we have 
huge amount of introspection. Very, very different to the Storm comic book I read last week, where all the introspection seemed very, very self-centred um, and very recursive. This is him actually looking at larger issues, realising his failings and how they affect larger issues and how he can try and do something about it. But where he's always questioning himself, it doesn't feel like it's just going on a loop. It feels like he's answering those questions, which are leading to more questions he needs to then answer. It is masterful. I genuinely love it. I have read a few Black Panther stories in my time, and none of them have made me care about the character or the setting as much as this one has. Genuinely love it. I am tempted to ignore past shorty and add it to my pull list. And if you're looking to grab a copy, go and give it a shot. Um, the Mr. Garson cover is fantastic. Scott Young cover is adorable. Um, I'm probably going to go for the cover A because it just looks kind of cool. But yeah, give it a shot. There's a lot to love about it. A lot. And hardly any, hardly anything that I didn't enjoy. Uh, that's it for me for the week, though. I'll be back next week. Until then, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.